All right, bruh fans, now for the final review of the trilogy that dropped this week. Season 3, Episode 14, Between a Rock and a Hard Place. This was... Okay. Wasn't as bad as Episode 12. Wasn't as good as Episode 13. So I'll give it a... 4 out of 10. Kind of right between it, because... I gave a 2 to episode 12 and a 6 to episode 13. So yeah, this one falls right in the middle. So, with the door being... It just sounds like the door is about to be burst through by the way the person on the other side is knocking. Greg comes out of the back. He had changed from his work clothes. And he's like, "What? what's going on? Why are y'all freaking out? And, you know... Claudia and Bill are just, you know, yelling, freaking out, thinking that it's her husband on the other side of the door. And they go to hide, which makes no sense because I, I will admit when Bill did say that, you know, I think it could jump. We're on the 20th floor, Bill. I think I can make it. That was actually pretty funny. But if you're trying, what's the point of hiding if you're talking so loud that there's no way in hell the person on the other side of the door couldn't hear you? especially if you think that it's the husband but regardless they go run in the back and hide and greg is like wonder what the hell are y'all freaking out for and look man there's a kill on the other side of that door don't get it he's like look yo you can do whatever you want i'm going to answer the door he answers the door and it's darla and i'm thinking well damn like Smokey's mom what you doing smoke knocking knocking on the door like banging on the door like you're the police okay technically she is the police but seriously it's like she literally was knocking so damn hard it's like okay that was a bit much i i get it for the story purposes of <gasps> is it is it the husband but regardless okay so she comes over you know dressed up like she's ready to go out she's smiling and everything and i'm thinking the entire time um you're clearly not there to see tom the last time you were there you popped greg across the face and was like i'm so disappointed in you and now all of a sudden, <laughs> now all of a sudden, you want to come over and you brought him a card that you're like, hey, don't read it while I'm in front of you. Read it, you know, when we're not together. And it's a thank you card, but also a sorry for slapping you in the face, which is ironic because I didn't mention this in my episode 12 review. I mean, that one already, you know, I was heating in that one as it was, but the irony of you coming over to the apartment because you heard all the screaming. You, as a police officer, got to the bottom of the situation, realized that Dina was the one that hit Greg first and said, yeah, he could actually press charges on you. And then she left in a huff. Yet then Darla proceeds to hit Greg, even though he was the victim. So technically, couldn't he press charges on Darla? But she's going over there to say sorry and whatnot. And uh, apparently she had talked to one of her friends who convinced her to give Greg a bit more time to like think things through basically instead of her just blowing up and tripping all of a sudden. And then he asked, well, what about what do you give cars to everybody? Even that guy you were, you know, hanging out with the other night. Oh, it was just a hookup. Come on. You don't hook up. But then Greg goes on to explain why he's been acting the way he has and you know, basically because of an ex-wife wanting more money and stuff. He just wants to be done and he just needs to like, you know, get away from stuff in order to straighten things out. Does that include me? Look, I want you in my life, even if we're just cool as friends and they both agree. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And it's like, hey, you want to go to dinner? Well, I'm not dressed up for nothing, but hey, don't worry. I'll drive and I'll pay the bill because, you know, you're kind of going through something right now. And I'm like, okay, even though I think this is a flimsy setup, okay, I guess it's cool because... And I'll get to the follow-up of this scene in a little bit, but um, it's just so hot and cold with Darla. It's like one minute she's cool, the next minute she just blows up out of nowhere. Also, she even told Greg, oh yeah, well I came over because I saw you coming home from work. That, that guy stopped, because that's very creepy. In episode 11, I think that was the episode where uh, Greg was in his feelings because I think it was John talking to him about the whole... Wait, you, you, you going out with a trans girl, man? You, you shouldn't do that. You know, you just got a divorce. You need to see what's out there and all that stuff. And, 
you know, he didn't call Darla that day while he was at work. He gets home. He's trying to get his keys to open the door. And she just pops up out of nowhere. Oh, hey. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, what? And then it's like, you hadn't called. And he's like, wait, were you looking out of your door to see when I would get home? Yes. Darla, come on. That got to stop. But that's why she, you know, came over when she did. So, uh, okay. Now, we go over to the sandwich shop. And, you know, Alice is showing... Um, Hilda of the ropes about, you know, how to work at the sandwich shop and whatnot. And John says they can't really afford another worker right now. And, you know, Alice reassures her. I mean, reassures Hilda. Don't worry. We can put you aboard. It's like, well, it's like she'll work cheap. And, well, I hope you like working for nothing because there's no money. And then, like, the more Alice insists, the more John's like, well, hey, how about this? She could stay, but that money is coming out of your check. <laughs> so Alice kind of shut up after that. But she's like, well, you know what? I'm going to be working her like a dog then. So um, Tom actually stops by the sandwich shop real quick to talk with John about um, Bill's affair. And, you know, the fact that he's messing around with the wife of a very dangerous man. And then Tom is like, well, we got to stop him. And John says, well, pretty much what Mike has said before, like in season one, when Tom's like, we got to stop him from breaking up the wedding. And it's like, look, we've already talked to Bill Bill's a grown man. He's going to make his own decisions, but we've done all we can do. But Tom says to, he basically sums up bruh in one sentence. It's like when John goes, Tom, every time we try to do something or make something better, it goes wrong and we make it worse. Tom's like, well, you got me there, but you know what? We got to try anyway. All right. So they kind of have this thing where we're going to go talk to Bill. We haven't heard from Mike. We need to check in on Mike. And then Tom throws Greg into the mix as well, which even though he really doesn't go into full detail, I'm guessing it has to do with him, you know, dating a trans woman. So I guess that's why he said we need to have a sit down with all the bros about this, because I think he even mentions like, does Mike know? And obviously he doesn't because he's been busy doing his own thing. So I guess it's one of those situations where kind of like the sister circle, the bros need to meet up and go over everything that's been going on. To try to, you know, fix things, make things right. Now, in any case, um, whew, Tom's like, hey, we're going to meet up tonight. And he and John does mention how Regina's mom is going to start working at the sandwich shop. Not much to talk about there. So, we go over to the restaurant that Greg and Darla are at. And Darla mentions how, Greg, come on. Now, you know you get a little flirty whenever um, you get a bit tipsy. And then they talk about their feelings, where they're at. And this was mentioned earlier in the episode, but they kind of have this thing where they don't want to keep going back and forth with each other. And, you know, Greg, you know, mentioned sex. And I was like, look, I don't know if you're ready because you can't handle that. And this and Greg, I don't think this is just because he's tipsy, because I feel like he he's like this anyway. Greg has a way of not taking no for an answer in that when Darla expresses I'm not ready to get to this level yet. Greg continues to push. You know, he, he just doesn't take no for an answer, which is a red flag, if you ask me. Speaking of red flag, technically orange because Pam was wearing orange. Pam, out of nowhere, you know, pops up over that table. Hey, Greg. And then, you know, she's introduced to Darla. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, you know, Pam just happens to be there. She's saying hi and she's going to leave. And she just go out of nowhere goes, oh, can I join you? And it's like, nah, we're we're on a date. No, um, let, let me just grab this chair and move it over here. Pam, they're on a date. What, what are you doing? And then Darla's like, wait, well, what's this? It's like, yeah, I need to talk to you about Mike. Yeah, okay, we could talk about that later. Oh, yeah, the martinis here are good. And then Darla's like, okay, I see what this is. And Greg's like, no, 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 this, I don't know what's going to look. Pam, you need to go. Look, if you want to talk with another woman while you're on a date with me, I have an idea. Um, Yeah, you can. Have, and Pam's like, oh, okay, um, you're getting up. Can I have this seat? Pam. And then Darla's like, you know what? Yeah, enjoy yourselves. And um, you can buy your own food and find your way home. And, you know, and she curses at him and she leaves. And I'm like, Darla, what the hell? Did you not? Like, see that, you know, Greg was trying to de-escalate the situation. He was trying to get rid of Pam. And obviously ignoring her wasn't going to work because she just inserted herself into the date. Pam basically did to Greg 
what Mike constantly did to her in season one. How many times, I think it was like two or three times at a restaurant or a bar, Mike would approach Pam while she's on a date with another dude and just rudely interrupt them. Then like the childish, you know, how his childish behavior at um, Regina and Peter's wedding, when he literally saw Pam there with a date, but he like sat between them or sat next to them. And it's like, bro, you're acting like a three-year-old right now. What's going on? So this was just really weird. But I will say this. Pam did have one thing to say that I did like. Wow, you know what? She seems like a really jealous type. You, know, you need to be careful with people like that. I don't think you should, you know, date someone like that. So basically the conversation shifts to Mike actually didn't check into the rehab program at all over the weekend. Natalie hasn't seen him. I'm like... Natalie, why isn't she in the season? Okay, but she wants, you know, um, Greg to see if she can, you know, they can work together to get the bros to check in with Mike to see what's going on because she's worried. And, um, hey, I'm here with some clients, so don't worry. I will cover your bill. And I'm like, good, 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 Pam, good. And he mentions like, yeah, it's like we hadn't even started eating yet. I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm not, I'm surprised they didn't just take it to the next level. And have Pam start eating Darla's food because they hadn't started eating yet. I would have been like, she would have been like, man, you know, your your date's missing out. It's pretty good. I would have been like, well, you might as well have went that far. Seriously, you went far enough as it was. So why not take it a step further? But Pam was way out of pocket for that. You know, straight up Felicia from Friday. If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I posted a clip of that yesterday. Um, because that was literally what um, Pam did. So, the final scene, we go over to the sandwich shop, and Hilda talks a bit about her husband, how he had passed, and, you know, he was a good man until, you know, he started cheating on her, and then, you know, it was revealed that there was a time he had went up to Atlanta to meet with a woman, and um, Alice talks about, oh, I hate a homewrecker, you ever mess around with married men before? None that didn't pursue me first, and then she notices a bracelet on Alice's wrist, and it turns out... That bracelet has an inscription that um, Hilda had on a bracelet that looked just like the one Alice had. And then it turns out, you know, she realizes that, wait a minute, you're one of them skanks that my husband messed around with. And it's like one of us about to die. And then Alice is like, now I know you ain't say that to a woman who's holding a knife. And then the episode fades to black. So I ain't gonna lie, Miss Alice. She was actually pretty good in these three episodes. But yeah, um, that was episode 14. And. You know, Pam just, Pamela, what's wrong with you? And also Darla, I, uh, look, Greg and Darla have no reason to be together. They just don't because th at first I thought, okay, this would be an interesting pairing and dynamic, but the more these characters interact, the more I'm like, they have no business being together. Darla and Greg, it, on, on the flip side, it's like, yeah, you would think they would be together because they both seem, you know, very, very... Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde with their emotions. Like one minute they're cool. The next thing they, you know, they go off at the drop of a hat. But like Pam said, Darla is, you know, jealous. And like I said, you know, when you watching constantly for somebody to come home from work out of the door of your apartment, that does seem to be a red flag. Just saying. And like I said before, it's like a thank you card slash sorry for smacking you in the face, despite the fact that you saved him from a woman who was trying to falsely accuse him, yet you do the same thing that other woman did by putting your hands on him first. Nah, I don't know. And not to mention um, the fact that Greg is going through a lot right now. Obviously, I mean, it's not even about him testing the water, playing the field. He just needs to, like, finalize the divorce and stuff. But if he's, you know, curious slash uncertain about being with a trans person maybe Darla's better off you know like she even said it herself earlier in the season I, I've I, I've been true about who I am and I don't have time for this back and forth because of your own uncertainty so she's probably better off you know finding someone who is comfortable with that you know dating um or being part of that lifestyle versus Greg who's kind of you know going back and forth because of the outside perspective and potential influence of the bros. So there's that. But yeah, like I said, they just really don't seem to be a good fit due to the 
constant butting of heads. Like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is probably one of the first times, you know, in these three episodes, when I look at Greg's introduction in the back half of season two, where I've actually been on Greg's side for a change. Kind of like Bill after, you know, he got married. But yeah, also Greg just not knowing how to take no for an answer. I think if nothing else, Darla should look at that as, you know, not respecting her own boundaries. So yeah, both of them are kind of, yeah, they don't belong together. But that's just my opinion. But I am curious to see what's going to happen next week with uh, Alice and Hilda, though. That's that's something else. It's like Hilda's going to get fired on her first day. And also, I think it was John or somebody who mentioned, you got her back here showing her all the food and whatnot. She ain't got no hairnet on or anything. I mean, thankfully, she did have on gloves, you know, in this final scene. But yeah, don't they need to have little hats or hairnets or something? But I don't run their business, so who am I to judge? So thanks so much for tuning in. What did you think of the three episodes of Bruh? And uh, yeah, with that being said, like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.